I collect stamps, which was so frustrating because I had some of the best stamps in the country. And uh, I do research on them, looking for flaws and things like that. You know, you're pretty proud of yourself because you found one and you know, a couple of days later you go through a book and there's this stamp again. If you forgot all about the research you did, you're not even sure and you, you start again. When you understand what's happened, it's so frustrating. <laughs> Paul went to see a GP and he came back and told me that he'd been referred to a memory clinic because he was having problems with his memory at work. And I just dismissed that. And I just sort of thought, well, there's no real problem here. So it took another nine months before the GP said to Paul, well, what happened at the memory clinic? And Paul said, oh, I never went. So they then did a new appointment. They did it fairly quickly and they asked me along. And at the end of the interview, the neurologist said, well, I think there is a problem and we better do some testing, Paul. So they took Paul off. But there was a nurse in the room and she looked at me and she said, you've got a very funny shade of grey. She said, I think we'd better go and have a cup of tea. And I said, well, quite frankly, I didn't realise there was ever a problem. But there is, and I'd be masking it because I'd taken over. What they gave me was probably all right for someone that's got um, Alzheimer's and depression. But they loaded me up on these drugs and they were they were so bad, all I did was, was cry and shake all day and it was, it was just terrible. You don't really believe that it, all this is happening to you. The guilt is you feel at times you're using someone else's time as far as the, the doctors and all those sort of people because you don't feel so bad, it's just that you get sudden, sudden depressions and uh, um, you, you don't believe what's happening. It was a few months after that that I noticed he began to have a tremor in his right arm. It took another two years to get the diagnosis, but I began then to inquire as to why he thought he had problems. Um, I think there is a reluctance to diagnose people with Alzheimer's or with dementia. They do hunt for other things, and I think the complication of being a gay couple just made it a little bit more difficult for the medical profession. But since then, um, there has been no issues. People like Alzheimer's Australia have treated us extremely well. Uh, Paul was diagnosed before the age of 65, which meant that he was diagnosed as younger onset um, Alzheimer's. Um, like anyone else that's not happening to me, uh, then I, as things change slowly, I, I accepted it. Um, I think I was very lucky because I had Tony's support all the time. So I, I, don't, I quite don't know how I'd cope or how people cope if they don't have someone close to them. Paul and I met in, in a, um, at a gym and he looked at me and I looked at him and we carried on with our exercises and he asked for my telephone number and he said he'd give me a call and I left and I thought, well, nothing's going to happen there. And then we met and we found that, in fact, we liked most the same things. There are no sickies with this job. It is a hard job and it's one that I enjoy and I have no regrets. It's a big job. I'd hate it. Well, I'm very lucky that I can leave Paul during the day and some evenings I do, I go out uh, to get some respite and he's quite happy to uh, watch the telly and to go to bed. Uh, I have regrets that we find ourselves in the situation, but I have no regrets that it's me who's looking after Paul and helping. And uh, do I do a good job? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs>